I need a morning routine with an insurance policy, okay? Sometimes if it's a 44 degrees and sunny in the middle of fall and I have had a beautiful night of sleep, I can't get myself to wake up and go for a walk first thing in the morning. But most of the time, that is not the case. <laughs> most of the time, I am soaking up every last minute of sleep I can get, trying to do my morning routine in 30 minutes or less, and trying to find a balance of prioritizing my mental health while also getting to where I need to be on time. While there are times where I am more more ambitious than others and more of a morning person than others I am someone who struggles with my mental health just like a lot of people do and that's okay but that means it's important for me to have systems in place that will work for me during my best times and my worst times systems that are simple that are tried and true and that I know I will be capable of sticking to regardless of the circumstances granted sometimes you have a day where you just don't leave the bed <laughs> sometimes you're traveling sometimes things vary of course that's just the nature of life but I want to share with you the five habit morning routine that that I stick to. Sometimes I can accomplish more, sometimes I am barely getting through to that fifth step, but either way it's my starting point and it's pretty realistic for me. And above all, it just works. So without, without further, ado, further ado, let's, let's get into it. All right, first things first, I am not the kind of person that can wake up and just immediately spring out of bed. Unfortunately, I do actually think about everything that's ever happened ever every single morning as soon as I wake up. So that's just a cute little fact about me. I try. And by try, I mean I say every single day that I'm going to do it and I have yet to succeed. But I try not to get on social media while I'm still in bed. What I will do is complete my Duolingo as soon as my eyes open. And I say that it's because the brain is more receptive to learning when it's still waking up. However, the truth is, it is because the notifications that the Duolingo app sends throughout the day just get more and more heinous. Leave me alone. But I do have over a 500 day streak. Now, as I said, a lot of the things that you're seeing me do here are not technically a part of the non-negotiable habits list, but they do tend to happen. Exhibit A, letting the light in. Exhibit B, loving on my pets, of course, how could I not do that? Exhibit C, giving my dog the sun she so desperately begs for right on cue every single day. And why would she not? It is very hard work being my best girl. Okay, friends, so the first habit of our day is arguably the most important, not only of this 24 hours, but of my entire existence. Shout out to my psychiatrist for her moral contribution. I am in fact a much better person when I'm medicated. I normally take it with 16 ounces of water and electrolytes, A, because I'm convinced Texas is trying to kill me, and B, because you cannot pry this Harry Potter cup out of my dead hands. No, I don't actually have an attachment to Harry Potter, I just love this cup for some reason I can't explain to you. At this point, it is time to start prepping my coffee so that it can cool down in the freezer while I'm doing other things. I actually thought for the longest time that if I did this, the cup would explode, but apparently that doesn't happen and I'm just anxious. Who would have thought? Moving on, listen, listen, I know I'm about to lose you. You're seeing me pull out the journal and you're like, what the hell, we don't have time for this. Nobody actually does this in the morning. To be honest with you, I normally don't do this in the morning. I typically do my gratitude list on an app called How We Feel that one of my coworkers told me about because it actually tracks your moods over long time frames and it'll give you like coping mechanisms and it gives you a little field to journal so I just use that as my daily gratitude spot while I track my mood. If that makes sense, it's just faster and I like it a lot. The deal I've made with myself about my morning reading is that it only has to be done for 5-10 to 10 minutes and 99% of the time it is only 5 minutes long. The contents of this book do have to be educational and that can look like a lot of things. The purpose of this is not never ending self-optimization, it's just to get myself outside of my own head and into the world, honestly. Hey Google, play Olivia Rodrigo. Just kidding, I do have to make my bed every single day. This is actually the one thing that I cannot leave my house without doing. Not because I'm some super organized person, but because it actually just drives me kind of insane. And I'm not saying that in a hee hee ha ha way. I don't think the word insane should be used lightly. If I come back to my home after being gone all day and I see a bed that is not made, it genuinely sends a pang of depression through my body. I cannot explain it. But that's neither here nor there. Me and my thick little Mexican gobija from my parents' house will probably be with me until the end of time. 
kind of unrelated, but since we're in my bedroom, I feel the need to mention that if you are someone who has a hard time falling asleep or just has anxiety, I highly recommend getting a weighted stuffed animal. It has made such a big difference for me. And listen, before you roll your eyes, I don't always do a mini tidy up in the mornings. A lot of times they happen in the evenings, but I am a firm believer that doing things in small increments throughout the week instead of as one big hole on the weekends makes life so much easier. When it comes to breakfast, I typically try to aim for something that's high in protein or allows for a lot of color on my plate. But if you're someone who struggles with your mental health, you know that eating a breakfast is something that can be incredibly challenging and one of the first habits to fly out the window when you're having a hard time. So I try to just be intuitive with what I'm wanting and keep some things that are easy to make on hand. For example, these protein pancakes. They're super easy, but I know they're gonna keep me full and I know they're meeting a nutritional need. Ugh, then it's time for the star of the show. Give it a minute, give it a minute. Three, two, one. Oh, she is beautiful. Look at that foam. Oh my God, I love her. Dare I say, she is the reason for all of this. Whether I'm working from home or leaving the house, my biggest focus is on what is gonna be the most comfortable for me sensory-wise. I don't want to be in jeans that are restricting. I don't want to be in a sweater that's itchy. I don't want to feel like I am tolerating the things that are on my skin. Other than that, it's really just a free for all. I have to count the small wins and a lot of times I'm just proud of myself for getting out of my PJs and getting on with what I need to do. Don't get me wrong, I love a little drama, a little dress up, a little experiment. But on a day-to-day -day basis, that's just not what my energy can go to. I am simply trying to be okay. Oh, and for all my friends that switch out their purse with literally every single outfit, pro tip, keep a bucket of the things you normally switch out by the door. It makes it so much easier. So there you have it. That is my magic sauce. Again, life changes, seasons vary. It is okay if not every single day looks the same. It is okay if your needs change. It is okay if you follow your intuition. I know we're so gung-ho on discipline and self-optimization these days, but it is also important to be tender with yourself and to prioritize the things that you genuinely need as opposed to the things you've been told that you need. And with that, take care of yourselves. Thank you for being here. I hope this was helpful to you in some way. If you have never been here before, my name is Rosalie. I probably should have led with that, but alas, I'm a 24 year old who lives in Dallas, Texas and is passionate about many things. My pets, mental health, and pop music, to name a few. So if you like this video, please give it a like and subscribe and consider staying for a while. I'll see you in my next one. And I think that's everything. <laughs> Bye. It was late at night. It's